In this video, I'm going to show you the absolute basics of sculpting in Blender. And then in our next video, I'm going to show you how actually how to sculpt a actual character in Blender. So I'm super excited. So let's get on with the basics. So I'm now in Blender 4.5 and this is how the default interface actually looks like. So if you guys are not aware how to use this, how to move around it, how to navigate around it, then I have a full video that shows you everything. So I'll leave the link in the description. But in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of sculpting only. So first things first, I'm just going to show you that over here, I'm just going to enable screencast keys. So you guys can see whatever, whatever I'm pressing, you will see everything. Okay. So I'm going to quickly remove that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete everything. So I'm going to do A and then X to delete everything. Once we have done that, I'm now going to add in a mesh and we're going to add in a icosphere. Now, remember, when we're sculpting, we want as much vertices as possible. That means we'll get a higher resolution, meaning our sculpt is going to be so much more better. So we're going to add in a modifier. We're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. So we can go over here to our subdivision modifiers property panel and then over here add modifier we're going to search subdivision surface modifiers over here then default is one but we're going to make this at least a four and then we're going to leave out catmull clock and we're going to apply this modifier so now if we go into edit mode you'll see that we have so much more vertices to work with so now when we're sculpting we can actually sculpt more of these vertices it's going to give us a better sculpt in general so now let's go back and we're going to go into our sculpting workspace over here on our top we have layout modeling sculpting we're going to quickly select that we are now in our sculpting workspace and this is where you would do most of your sculpting now there's another way to get to your sculpting workspace so if you go going to layout you'll see that we also have a sculpt mode as well but generally, I just like to use the sculpting works because that is why it is there. Now, once we are here, now you'll notice this right side is obviously the same, but you'll notice that over here in our toolbar, we actually get to see the brush settings. So the radius, radius unit, strength, direction, normal radius, tilt, strength, hardness, auto smooth. So all of these stuff, that is the brush settings. And we also have some advanced settings that I'll show you later. Now, the next thing we're going to do is that I'm going to show you all of these tools. So if you quickly drag this out, you'll, so, you'll see that we have all of these. This move, rotate, scale, you probably already know that. G to grab, R to rotate, and S to scale. And over here, you're gonna, we're only going to be using the brush mode only. So let's forget about this. Let's quickly just hide this like that. And over here, we also have these other settings. The same thing over here, the radius, strength, and etc. Plus or minus if you're adding or subtracting and over here over here we can also enable symmetry dan topo remesh etc now I'll show you what dan topo actually mean but over here let's get started with the uh, brush tools so over here quickly move this up you'll see all of the brush tools in blender 4.5 um before this in the older versions you'll probably know that the brush tools were actually over here on the left but now since the update, we now have it at the bottom. And I feel like at the bottom is so much more neater, neater and better. So now we're here. Now I'm going to show you how this works. Over here, if you hover over it, you'll get the name of the brush tool and the description. So for example, we have the blob tool and it says magnifies the mesh as you draw. Useful for an additional inflation effect on the stroke. So then we're going to click this. And we have the brush enabled now i'm going to show you some shortcuts if you press f you can scale the brush up or down so over here scale it up or down like that then if we left click you'll notice that we created that inflate effect as i said in the description so over here we create another one over here and as you can see we create a sort of a um eyeball effect like that okay it's super 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 cool what you can also do is you can change the radius from here as well so for example radius of 143 increase the radius we have such a bigger radius but normally i tend to use the f button as um you can actually see it in general 
Then we can also change the strength over here, change the strength, how um, aggressive you want the inflate blob tool you want. Then I'll quickly move, quickly come back over here and let's change this. For example, we have a clay tool. Now remember, I'm not gonna show you all of the brush tools, you can do that in your own time. And remember, just hover over it, you get the name of the tool and the description to a clay, similar to the draw brush, but with the flattening, flattening effect and a subtle smoothing, useful for polishing, building volumes. So over here, you'll get this effect like this. Cool, isn't it? Now remember, you can always, always, always do it yourself. Now, that I'm just gonna only show you these two, that is it. But now the default, the draw tool is this one over here, so you can always draw with this tool. Now control Z to undo everything. Now, remember, we didn't have Dyn Topo dynamic topology enabled, okay? And the dynamic topology is if you enable this, when you enable it, that just means that you can add vertices on top of it. Now, when you don't have dynamic topology on, you're just editing the existing vertices. So over here, if I quickly draw this, it's just editing the existing the existing vertices I have in the mesh. It's not adding vertices, it's just modifying the existing vertices. So as you can see, it just modified these vertices I had. But if we enable dynamic topology to click this, okay. Then if I click this, as you can see now, it's actually adding vertices. As you can see, it added vertices like this. Cool. Now we've gotten that, then we can actually smooth this out and it would look so much better. Remember to shift and then smooth it out like this. Okay. Now, I normally don't have dynamic topology enabled. I just don't like it. If I do want to get more vertices, we can still use it. So as you can see, this looks so much better, more smooth. But remember, we're not adding vertices. We're just, um, we're just modifying it so that is the absolute basics of sculpting remember you can mess around with all the tools but remember you can we're only going to use the general um draw brushes for our actual sculpting the mesh in our next video so stay tuned for that comment down below if you want any tutorials for blender and i'll see you guys in my next video and just to show you guys more explanation on dynamic topology on blender 4.5 lts manual it says that dynamic topology can be toggled with the textbook as I showed you in the video. And with dynamic topology active, most brushes will subdivide the mesh during the stroke. That basically shows you for general explanation of dynamic topology, visit the introduction, you can use that. I'll leave the link in the description for this website. And remember, each detail types um, is set here depending on the detail type being used in the property, rather be with a pixel count or a percentage.